What's up guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to Steal the Spotlight. Today I have a more casual, kind of behind the scenes sort of situation going on. Pretty much I've been getting a lot of requests lately about the process that actually goes behind putting together the lookbooks on my channel. And I figured the easiest way to answer all of the questions is just to film the process from start to finish. So that's exactly what we're doing today. I'll be talking about the equipment I use, finding filming locations, editing software, all that good stuff and I'm so excited because we have the perfect sponsor for today's video which is Skillshare. If you aren't already familiar with them they are pretty much an online learning community for creators and they offer more than 17,000 courses through a bunch of different genres. So for me obviously I'm looking at more the creative side of things, there's heaps of stuff to help you with filming and editing but there's also lifestyle, business, technology. Personally I'm a huge supporter of self-education it is great to always be learning new things. For me, I don't actually have any professional qualifications in this field, so I find it really, really helpful. But even if you do, you might just want to brush up on some skills or maybe you want to try a completely different field or area that you've always kind of been interested in learning more about. Their premium membership gives you access to high quality classes from experts in their field. And it's also a lot more affordable than other learning platforms I've seen. If you are interested in learning on Skillshare, then the first 500 people to use my link in the description box will actually get two months premium membership for free and then after that if you continue to keep using the service then it will go back to as low as the $10 a month fee. Obviously today for Wes Anderson our main source is going to be his actual films and I don't own too many physical DVDs these days but none of his movies are actually on Netflix or anything at least not here in Australia so I do have the hard copies so usually I'll just watch these as a little bit of a refresher in this case not only to get inspo for the clothing but also a little bit of inspiration for how I want to film the video and just the concept of it in general but on top of that I also like just a quick point of reference that I can keep coming back to as I'm planning everything out so usually after I've watched the material I go in and make a bit of a mood board. So as you guys saw, I did a bunch of research last night and today I'm feeling inspired to start planning out the outfits. I always start with what I already have in my wardrobe. Obviously, that's a bit of a no-brainer, but I guess that does kind of influence the characters that I choose to recreate as well. So I don't have it 100% set in my mind. I'm just going to kind of feel it out as we go I suppose. Even though I only just started really planning this video, I've had it in mind for a long time and I actually picked up this polo dress with Margot Tenenbaum in mind when I was in Sydney like back in May or something like that so definitely one of the characters on our list but I'm not too sure what to do for the fur coat for her because I have like a lot of faux fur coats but just nothing that's the right length or the right color they are kind of expensive to purchase though even at the thrift store so I'm gonna try and make one work And obviously Wes Anderson characters a very specific look so I'm just gonna go through individually and pick pieces but usually if it's a broader theme like a 90s inspired lookbook or something like that I pull a bunch of stuff and then play around from there which is more so the process you would have seen in my recent Star With Me video. I think I'm gonna try and do all three of the Tenenbaum siblings because I do actually already have a red Adidas tracksuit in my wardrobe which is just perfect really. Um, it doesn't have as old school a sort of vibe as Ben Stiller's character but I think we can still make it work which means the only one that I really need to work on still is Luke Wilson's character but I feel like a beige suit should be pretty easy to find at the thrift store. I already have this polo that I've had for years ever since I did like a That 70s Show inspired lookbook which I think will work 
well for his base since he's like the tennis star. So Moonrise Kingdom is one of my favorites and I knew that I had enough accessories to um, do Sam's look. I've got this, which was actually my great grandma's. And then I've got some scarves down here as well to do like the little scouts uniform. I've even got his glasses. So I definitely want to try and make it work, but obviously I don't have a legit scout uniform and I think that would be pretty difficult to find. I do, however, have this play suit here, which I got a little while ago from Princess Polly. And honestly, I haven't gotten that much wear out of it, but I think if we belt it and just put all the bits and bobs to it, that it'll definitely work for the costume. But yeah, I think that is about all I can get out of what I already have. There's a couple of characters that are missing a few items still. So from here, I usually just make a list of what I still need to find and then I'll hit up the thrift stores and fingers crossed, I can find what I need there. Sometimes I'll also use like Facebook Marketplace and Depop and as a last resort, then I'll turn to online shopping or retail. <laughs> perfect fit so I'm gonna hang on to those but I feel like maybe we could get a better find for the blazer this one is $15 and it's not perfect so I'm gonna keep looking for that so quite some time has passed now and I've pretty much got all of my outfits sorted thankfully the thrift stores really came through for me I was pretty lucky to find most things the biggest hurdle was definitely the Grand Budapest Hotel obviously Purple blazers aren't exactly in abundance, so I ended up having to search online, which even that was a task in itself. I found this one on Nasty Gal though. And then surprisingly enough, the other issue I encountered was finding Susie's outfit. I mean, I thought it'd be pretty simple. It's just a sweet little pink dress, but I cannot find something like that anywhere. I was at the thrift store the other day um, looking for other stuff because I'd pretty much given up hope on it, but I found this pink nightgown, which is just glorious to be honest, but I'm gonna hem it now into a mini dress, wear a white shirt underneath and just make it work. But yeah, after that, we should have everything pretty much sorted. I'm just gonna try on a few of the outfits and finalize the accessories and stuff, but hopefully that means I'll be able to get into filming tomorrow. After much preparation, we've finally made it to day one of filming. Before I jump into it though, I thought I'd kind of run through a few of my most frequently asked questions about equipment and backgrounds, that sort of thing. So I usually film on a Canon 700D. It is one of the more standard models and also one of the more affordable options on the market, but I think that it still does the job fine. I use the standard kit lens as well, which I think is 18 to 55. And then on top of that, I have a Sigma 1.4, which is really good if you're looking to get those close up shots and then get the really blurry backgrounds. Honestly, I don't know any information about the tripod that I use, but does the job fine. I think the standout is actually having one of these little remotes, which will become a lifesaver for you. If like me, you do most of your filming by yourself because yes, I'm always back and forth getting different angles and stuff, but it's almost impossible to try and focus it yourself if you don't have one of these. So highly recommend. Other than that, I also have the Rode VideoMic Pro for any of my talking segments. And then also, I guess most of my filming is done in this front room that I've turned into like a makeshift studio on a real, real budget. So <laughs> I have lights that I've had from eBay for years. And then the backgrounds that I use, I get a ton of questions about. Again, just on eBay, I have bought like a um, backdrop stand, and then you can get these cardboard paper rolls on eBay as well. I have a few different colors. They are kind of expensive though. Personally, I feel like I've gotten my money's worth, but like insider trade tip, often I also use just plastic tablecloths. You can get them from the cheap store. They're only like $1.50, bunch of different colors. I just hang them up over the backdrop and yeah, 
that's another great way to just change up the colors in your background depending on the sort of style of video that I'm doing. Also for lights, I have um, not ones in here at the moment, but just these little ones that I got from Bunnings. And then over the top of that, I'll use like color gels, which slightly tint the lighting a little bit. Color gels are really, really expensive if you're buying them on photography websites, but I use just plastic little cases that you usually find at the news agency for like covering books and stuff, school books. So yeah, those are like 60 cents or something, which is insane. <laughs> However, today we are leaving these four walls, which is always a very exciting experience for me because usually I'm stuck here. But since it is Wes Anderson inspired, I felt like we needed some more movement in the shots and I don't have a photographer or videographer or anything like that. But my mum is currently in town. She actually lives like a 10 hour drive away, but she comes to visit every so often often and I pretty much always put her to work, bless her. So whenever you see movement in my videos, probably means that the video was pre-filmed when she was here. So for the last week or so, I've pretty much been trying to rack my brain for location ideas. This is one of the hardest things about filming because there's not a ton of good stuff around that isn't super, super busy because that's just so embarrassing honestly you have no idea especially when you're doing these kind of costumey ones um, and also somewhere that's not gonna kick you out but I think I have the place it is called Old Petrie Town I've done a few still shots there before in front of these red doors and when I was looking through my Pinterest board to reference back I saw that the Grand Budapest Hotel kind of has red doors in the concierge where they keep all the hotel keys so I think it'll give off a similar vibe to that and I'm just gonna pack a few extra outfits as well because you never know there might be some more locations nearby So we've just made it on location where I want to film a couple of the outfits. It is super hot and sunny outside, but I think the spot I have in mind is shaded. So fingers crossed filming will go smoothly. <laughs> So we just finished up filming the first look and I think it turned out pretty well and we actually scouted another location that could potentially work for Margot Tenenbaum so we're going to do the glamorous task of getting changed in the car and then we're going to go and try and make that work too. So this spot is actually an old train station and in the film I'm pretty sure she gets off at a bus station but I thought it would give a pretty similar vibe and it's just a really cute spot to film in so hopefully things go well. So I'm going to be like here and do a dramatic headshot and as I turn my head zoom it all the way in so probably need to count me in. So I'm back in my natural habitat now, ready to do some editing. We finished getting all of the shots for the Wes Anderson lookbook. It ended up being over three days. We did like two outfits per day in some different locations, but I think we got some really good footage. I'm so excited to get into it. Editing is one of my favorite parts of content creation. I love the planning and editing. Not so much a fan of being on camera, which is kind of weird, but hey. Um, so, I am currently importing the footage of the SD cards onto my hard drive, then I'll start a new project on Final Cut Pro, which is the editing software that I use. I'm someone who always gets way too much footage, but I mean, I think it's always better to have too much than not enough, obviously. So I usually just drag and drop into the project and then get the blade tool and start chopping it up. So I have just the best options left. So I actually should have mentioned this earlier, but often I like to have a rough idea of how I want to edit the video before I even start filming. That way you know you're getting the right shots that you need to make your vision come to life. So obviously for this one, we were kind of just mimicking Wes Anderson's sort of vibe. So it's a little bit different than the editing I would usually do personally. But if you guys are more interested in kind of the filters and effects I usually use, I think I probably would categorize it as more of an old school 90s TV sort of vibe, just anything retro, vintage in general, I suppose. And 
Originally, I just came about that by playing around with all of the effects in Final Cut Pro and really just getting yourself familiar with the ones you like, the ones you don't like, and how much you can actually change them. You don't have to go with the preset that it originally is when you just drag and drop it on. My two favorites that come free with this software would definitely be the prism effect and also underwater, which I mostly use to kind of get that movement in the text. But as far as that kind of old video effect, I actually have a plugin that I purchased through Pixel Film Studios, which is a really, really good option if you just want a little bit more variety with your effects and filters. And obviously if you are willing to pay because they are kind of pricey. So I recommend really having a good look and thinking about if this is something that you want to adapt to your personal style that you know you're going to use in just about every single video. For me, I decided to invest in the VCR style one and yeah, I use it all the freaking time. So I'm glad I did. Another one I have is actually kind of like a color correction filter as well, which comes in handy, but I probably don't use it as much as I would like. I think we will use it today though, because Wes Anderson, one of the biggest hurdles is definitely going to be getting that kind of perfect color palette. I'm not really going super in depth with everything. I just wanted to mention a couple of the things that you guys most frequently see on my channel and just like the bare basics to get you started. But again, I just recommend getting in there and playing around with it. That is the best way to familiarize, familiarize yourself with it. But um, the next step is deciding whether I want to do voiceover or not. And usually I try to opt for no because I'm not very good at it. I have this mic here that I use, which is okay, but I really need to get one of those filters that um, stops like the noise all the time because it drives me insane. But um, I'm actually thinking that I might want to do a voiceover for this one just because in his films, there's often a narrator character, which I think could actually be really cool to weave into the lookbook sort of concept as well. But yeah, if I'm doing voiceover or if it's a chatty sort of video, then finding music is generally a little bit easier because it's just something soft to play in the background. So it's not a big deal. But if it's a lookbook where I'm actually editing it to the music, then Finding a song can be a real challenge because you want it to be catchy enough that kind of keeps people's attention and has a good beat to be able to edit the shots too as well. We are starting to see more and more good options for it now though, which is fantastic. There's some really good vlog music which you can find on a few different YouTube channels and also just searching SoundCloud is also a great bet. And for that, I just recommend contacting the actual artist themselves and asking for their permission. Sorry the lighting keeps changing, the weather cannot make up its mind today. Also sorry that my face is like really pale and my arms are super tan. I just applied some tan because I actually have to film later. But anyway, the point is music is either the first or last step for me depending on the style of video and also something that I always leave to the very end is doing that little intro at the beginning. Sometimes at that point I'm just so lazy and over it that I won't even do one but um, I try my best to put a little one in there but I don't know it's just hard to really capture the essence of the video without giving it away in just like the first 20 seconds so I find that to be the biggest challenge personally and then also another big one is doing the thumbnail because obviously this kind of determines whether someone is going to click on your video or not. I try to make them as colorful and inviting as possible, but um, yeah, I'm not really good with the clickbait thumbnail sort of thing. I just go for a vibe that suits me and my channel. Do be warned that procrastination plays a large role when it comes to editing. You'll find yourself constantly getting up for a drink or scrolling through Instagram, even though you're all caught up. I have kind of found a good process for me though. I try to work through to a certain point and then I know I can take a small break after that. So I'll finish chopping up all the footage, take a small break, do all of the color correction, take a small break. But I mean, everyone's gonna be different. And once you start doing it yourself, you'll probably find the rhythm that you best work to. But 
yeah, I think that is about all I wanted to mention for today's video. I hope you guys found it interesting. It's obviously a little bit different than my usual fashion content, but it's fun to see people's process. I really enjoy it and hopefully you guys did too. If you did, give it a big thumbs up for me and of course, subscribe, stay tuned for the Wes Anderson lookbook. It's gonna be up in a couple of days time.